to all of you. Today we are taking another important area from the civil service point of view, perhaps one major area of Indian history, about which we already gave a general introduction in my first session, hope you remember. And that area is medieval India. Medieval India is often referred to as a connecting link. In the words of Bipan Chandra, the world famous Indian historian, medieval India can be rightly considered as a link that connects the great past of India with its modern history. And it can be considered as a vital link that carries forward culture, tradition, art, artifacts, and almost everything to a new age, perhaps to the age of the British rule and even thereafter. Medieval India over the past many years, of course, especially right from 2016 onwards, if you go for a very progressive understanding of the question paper, has accrued greater importance. And today, the number of questions that are being asked from medieval India had increased like anything. It is in such a context, I am eager here to speak about medieval India and I am particularly interested to make students aware, especially my students aware of the strategy of dealing with medieval India as a crucial area or a crucial part of civil service examination. As you all know, when we go, for, go through UPSC question papers, maybe for the past 10 years or something, if we take a question paper of 2009 or 2008, the number of questions from medieval India were, were maybe two or three or sometimes even one. At a point of time when we were starting our preparation, the number of questions started increasing like anything. And believe me, when you take the 2017, 18 and 19 papers, the number has substantially increased to maybe 10 or 12. And that includes culture questions also from the medieval Indian domain. You know very well that then it is not a negligible area. It is not an area that can be ignored, but it is an area that can be tackled equally important like that of modern India. How can that be made possible? I am today sharing certain tips to you people and I am going for a question paper analysis with regard to medieval India. If you take the medieval Indian questions, maybe right from 2010 to 2019, you can identify certain special, special features or I would say certain unique specialities to the entire question paper where medieval India side questions are being posed. That unique speciality is that UPSC never asked questions from certain areas, but UPSC always attempted to ask questions from certain specific areas. And as candidates, we are supposed to focus our attention on those specific areas. You may be remembering our classroom sessions very clearly. We covered some part of medieval India and we left some areas which are to be covered in the future days. Today, I may be helping you out to focus your attention on those areas which has to be given top-notch importance when we deal with medieval India. If you take the question papers from 2000, then we can understand that the Mughal period or the Mughal administrative era has been given topmost importance by the examiner right from 2010 to 2019. We can expect or we can see that a number of questions has been asked from the Mughal era, especially related to certain rulers of the Mughal period like Muhammad Jalaluddin Akbar, definitely of Aurangzeb, and again the Mughal Maratha Tassel, those areas were specially given or those areas were given maximum attention by UPSC. On the other hand, UPSC relatively had given lesser importance to certain areas, especially the beginning of the Sultanate rule. Only very few, perhaps rarely only questions were asked from that area. Majority of the Sultanate rulers, that area also was not asked frequently or that area was ignored substantially. And again, within medieval India, a number of questions, not only from 2000, and if you take question papers of 2005, 2006, 2009, 2012, you can see that a number of questions emerged from one important area that is the medieval culture which of course has to be given a top-notch importance. Again, how medieval culture has been taken or has been uh, identified by UPSC as a question area. This is a very good, very good aspect to discuss with. UPSC never asked any straightforward question from medieval culture. 
UPSC was more interested in certain specific areas of medieval culture like the Sufi movement. We know very well that Sufi movement got strengthened, got strengthened in India, especially uh, years before the Mughal rule itself, during the Delhi Sultanate rule itself. And it started showing its signs of uh, growth in the Mughal period and it started declining in the later Mughal period, of course. So Sufi movement was an important area from where UPSC asked on an average 10 to 50 questions right from 2000 to 2020. Similar to Sufi movement, Bhakti movement was another important area from where we can expect a larger number of questions. Other than Sufi and Bhakti movements, when we focus our attention on medieval India, of course, there are three ticks that candidates can follow to deal with medieval India and to easily grasp and score marks in medieval India, which people like me follow for the past many years. As I stated before in my introductory session itself, you cannot read every element, every aspect of medieval India from right from the beginning till the end. That may be a very time consuming process and out of UPSC's picking of questions pattern or UPSC's attempt to pick questions, UPSC's strategy in picking questions, we can say that UPSC has been picking questions from certain specific areas and those areas has to be given maximum attention. Before dealing with those areas, I want to give you or I want to provide you with a basic understanding of the reference books you can follow. For Naibunya students, of course, Naibunya has a history book. Naibunya has already given, delivered a history book and medieval India is properly covered from the NCRT point of view itself in that history book. For those people who are currently not part of Naibunya, that Naibunya uh, institution or mechanism, you can follow NCRT. NCRT written by different people. NCRT of medieval India, especially of class 11 and class 12, okay, can be followed and those people who follow NCRT of class 10, they can also follow the same. These are the preferable reference book. Other than that, again, when you go online, when you search the internet, you can find that certain people had, had identified the core areas and had prepared a module-wise study material for medieval India and that can also be utilized by candidates for an easy grasp of the core gist areas. And now, once the material part is over, now we can directly deal with the tips for dealing with medieval India. As I stated before, the following are the most important areas that has to be given maximum attention when you deal with medieval Indian history. And I am so sure, I am giving you 100% surety that you can expect 1 to 5 questions in 2020 prelims paper. I repeat, you can expect 1 to 5 questions in 2020 prelims paper with regard to these specific areas. Number one or area number one is the cultural aspect of the Sultanate rule. In medieval Indian question paper, UPSC had never asked about any ruler about his policies or programs from Delhi Sultanate, but the cultural traits of Delhi Sultanate was a definite or a potential question area. And what are these cultural traits? These cultural traits definitely include art, architecture, literature, painting, and many other similar areas. Of course, literary areas acquire maximum importance. So, Sultanate and its cultural artifacts or cultural elements has to be given topmost attention. Second only to the cultural aspect of Delhi Sultanate, another important area comes to the picture is the, or the second crucial area is the Mughal administration. UPSA has been very much interested in asking questions related to Mughal administration, especially the paradigm change that Mughal administration experienced during the reign of Akbar and how that process continued. We know very well that Akbar was responsible for introducing the Mansabdari system in India under the leadership of Raja Todarmal and how many other similar systems were introduced by Akbar and how those systems continued during the reign of Jahangir was also known as Prince Salim during the reign of Shah Jahan and ultimately during the reign of Aurangzeb and later during the period of the later Mughal rulers. Okay, so definitely that is the second important area that is the Mughal administration and the major administrative policies of the Mughals. Third important area is also to be taken into consideration and that is the Mughal culture. When I say Mughal culture, of course, many of you may be wondering that it is a vast area and broad area and how will you, you chisel shape your preparation? I would say that don't focus on every aspect of Mughal culture. You need to focus on certain aspects of Mughal culture, especially Mughal painting to begin with. Mughal painting again, very recently UPST asked, asked a question right in 2019 related to Mughal painting. You can expect a question in 20, 
22 as well as in 21 likely. So Mughal painting is definitely important, especially Mughal painting during the reign of Jahangir. So that is Mughal culture. Other than painting again architecture, you know very well that Shah Jahan and many others made immense contributions in the domain of Mughal architecture. Of course, an important area. Then again, art, literary contributions, travelers who visited India, etc, etc, etc. That would be another important area of attention where you need to, you need to give maximum importance when you deal with medieval India. Other than, other than this third area, moving on to the fourth area again. Fourth area is also equally important and we cannot uh, ignore that area. That is the conquest during the Mughal period and the major battles fought. As far as I observed, with regard to medieval India, factual questions are more asked than conceptual questions. But again, these factual questions, we cannot say that it may only happen like this or that. So you need to identify the major wars, the major battles that were fought between the Mughals and the Rajputs especially between Mughals and Maharana Prada because a sizable amount of Rajputs were on the Mughal side between the Mughals and the Marathas, especially during the reign of Aurangzeb. And if there was one or two battles between the Mughals and the British, of course, that also has to be taken into consideration because during the reign of Shah Jahan, again, there was a battle between the Mughals and British at Hooghly. And again, during the reign of Aurangzeb, there was a skirmish between the Mughals and the initial European powers again, that has to be given, uh, given attention. And finally, the Battle of Buxar that permanently sealed the fate of the Mughal Empire and ultimately the Great Revolt of 1857. Okay, so major battles have to be given at most importance. So that would be your fourth area, the battles that were fought during the Mughal reign. And the fifth area again is very, very, very important and many of you may be guessing what would be the fifth area and that is Akbar. You can say that when you focus medieval history, when you try to focus somewhere in medieval history, that spotlight shall definitely fall on this one single person that is Muhammad Jalaluddin Akbar. Why Akbar is so important as a ruler? It is not because Akbar had uh, initiated certain new things or something, but Akbar was definitely a trendsetter. Akbar can be rightly designated, maybe second only to Ashoka or equal to that of Ashoka as one of the prominent rulers of India, one of the greatest rulers who ever ruled the Indian subcontinent and the policies of Akbar, policies, please not, the policies of Akbar are very, very, very important. You need to give your special attention whenever you deal with the rule of Akbar because the policies of Akbar was very important, especially his religious and cultural policy. You know very well that if you take 2016 paper, if you take 2019 paper, if you take 2014 paper, everywhere you can see that the religious policy of Akbar. You can expect questions. You already got questions from Din Ilahi. Again, the religion that was professed by Akbar, which later came into disuse after the death of Akbar. Akbar and Birbal ultimately became the only followers again to, to make a joke out of that. Again, other than Din Ilahi, uh, Akbar's major constructions, that is there. Then again, the philosophical ideas of Akbar. Fatehpur Sikri, that was one of his the major town he constructed. Then other than Din Ilahi, as I already stated, Ibadat Khana. That was another major thing. UPC directly asked a question related to Ibadat Khana, maybe in 2017 or 18. And you can expect similar questions from the philosophical and religious contributions of Akbar. And please don't ignore this area since I'm very sure that there will be at least one or two questions from this area. So to conclude, definitely, I'm not concluding Medieval India right now. I'm giving you a general introduction on Medieval India and how to strategize your preparation in Medieval India. Then again, I may state out one more area that is perhaps the sixth area, that is the Vijayanagara and the Bamanid Kingdom, especially the Vijayanagara, the cultural aspects or cultural elements of the Vijayanagara Empire. We know very well that now our focus of attention was in North India and the Vijayanagara and the Bamanid Kingdoms were in South India. They were, they were surrounded uh, regions around like Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, etc. And they witnessed great rulers like the, like the Krishna Devaraya of Vijayanagara Empire and many others. So the cultural elements, other than culture, nothing will be asked from this area. I'm damn sure I'm giving you an assurance. But the cultural traits of Vijayanagara Empire, especially under Devaraya and Krishna Devaraya, and of course the Bamanid rule too. Not much importance as address Vijayanagara. Under the Bamanid Sultans are also equally important. Once you cover these areas, these six areas, I can assure you that 80 to 85 percentage or even 80 to 90 percentage of the medieval Indian questions have been covered. Now, other than these, now I'm just strategizing. Other than these, you can read further about Maratha art, Maratha architecture, not much, but again, there were contributions, Rajput painting, etc., which are also important areas.
Now we shall meet in another session and we may continue our discussion on medieval India. Thank you.